Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Space This Week, the Monday rundown of the latest and greatest news from the fascinating world of rocketry, aerospace and spaceflight, where we strive to deliver the greatest overview of all the stuff that you have to look forward to over the next seven days, reflect upon all of the coolest things that happened over the past week and then celebrate all the upcoming space related anniversaries due to take place over the next seven days. As always, if you want to ensure you get these videos delivered to your screens on time so that your news is as relevant and up to date as possible, then do remember to click on that subscribe button down below to never again miss a rocket launch update. And with our greetings and salutations out of the way, let's dive right into our first segment, our recap of all the spaceflight news that happened since last Monday's episode. <laughs> Last week, on October the 6th, we finally saw Scrubtober come to an end, with the successful launch of SpaceX's latest Starlink satellite delivery, which took flight aboard the faithful Falcon 9 from the Kennedy Space Center. This launch suffered from four scrubs before finally getting off the ground, so it's nice to finally see it succeed. Shortly after launch, the first stage successfully touched down 633 kilometers downrange on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, and the recovery ship Ms. Tree successfully caught one of the fairing halves, making this the third successful flight and recovery of this fairing half. Ms. Tree's sister ship, Ms. Chief, attempted to catch the other fairing half, but unfortunately, she wasn't quite as fortunate. While a fairing catch wasn't successful, the fairing half was then later successfully recovered from the water. The successful recovery of the main booster marks its third successful touchdown. Previously, it carried SpaceX's and NASA's two satellite mission, and it carried two NASA astronauts aboard the Crew Dragon to the International Space Station. The 60 Starlink satellites deployed approximately one hour after launch and will join SpaceX's Starlink constellation, which is designed to provide global high-speed internet coverage. They will be especially valuable to people in remote or rural areas where ordinarily internet connectivity is spotty at best or completely unavailable at worst. The service was put to the test earlier this year after areas of Washington state were devastated by wildfires. SpaceX loaned emergency responders some of their Starlink terminals, and the satellites proved themselves to be a valuable resource in helping residents rebuild their communities, with some of the locations otherwise having no internet access at all. We're quite a way off having Starlink available to the greater public, but this success is proof of the Starlink's potential. The Starlink launch was actually the only rocket launch to take flight this week, so there's not really much more to talk about in this segment of Space This Week. But before we move on to covering all of next week's launches, please make sure to like the video down below if you're enjoying the ride so far. Coming up over the next week, we have four confirmed launches. Our first liftoff is on this video's upload date, October the 12th, over at the Zichang Satellite Launch Center in China. The rocket will be a Long March 3B-E, and its payload is a GeoFen 13 high-resolution Earth observation satellite. This will be the Long March 3B's 66th launch. The day after tomorrow, on the 14th of October, we'll be able to tune in to two more launches. The first rocket to take flight that day will be the Soyuz 2.1A rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, and this launch will be quite an exciting one, as it will be a crewed vehicle carrying three crew members to the International Space Station in the Soyuz spacecraft's 145th crewed launch. The mission may also mark the first of a so-called ultra-fast rendezvous flight plan, which will see the Soyuz spacecraft reached the International Space Station a mere three hours after launch. Aboard the Soyuz will be two Russian cosmonauts and one American astronaut, but with the newly established human launch capabilities back in the US with the Crew Dragon, this may well be the last Soyuz launch to carry an American astronaut. On the same day, we'll see China launch another Long March rocket, this time the beefy Long March 6 booster. The rocket will launch from the Taiyan Satellite Launch Center and will be carrying 10 new sat commercial Earth observation satellites for Argentine satellite manufacturer Satellogic, as well as possibly three other rideshare satellites, though these are currently yet to be officially announced. 
on the 16th of October, we will once again be crossing our fingers in the hopes that the ill-fated Enrol 44 mission will finally take flight. Set to fly aboard the mighty Delta IV Heavy from Cape Canaveral, this mission has come painfully close to launching twice already, each time aborting right at the ignition point. Despite its scrubs, United Launch Alliance have confirmed that the rocket and payload are still in good condition and hope to launch the classified American spy satellite this week, definitely for real this time. Only time will tell, of course, but I for one will certainly be keeping my fingers and toes crossed to finally see this beast of a booster leave the launch pad. And that's it for all of the officially confirmed launches. We very nearly got to see an October 17th Soyuz 2 launch of a GLONASS-K satellite, although we are now hearing that this has been pushed back to October 25th. So make sure you tune in to next week's episode of Space This Week to hear all about that one, and make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss it. Over at Boca Chica now, work continues on the Starship and its Super Heavy booster. The prototype at the forefront of everyone's excitement right now is the SN8, which has now passed its cryo testing and hopefully we'll be able to see the installation of its three Raptor engines this week. The SN8 is exciting as unlike the SN5 and 6, this will fly all the way up to 15 kilometers, the first true test of the Starship airframe at high altitude. Altitude. Don't expect this to happen this week, of course, as SpaceX will still need to run a static fire test and attach the nose cone, but over the next few days, we may hear more news about when the static fire test will take place. Hopefully, maybe sometime next week. Anyway, while we can talk about Starship all day long, the status quo hasn't really changed from stuff is still being built, so I'm going to close off our coverage of all the upcoming spaceflight events to look forward to over the next seven days and ferry us over to this show's next segment, all the best spaceflight anniversaries that will be taking place this week. <laughs> We begin our history segment on this video's upload date, October the 12th, in 1964, where the Soviet Union makes history by launching the Voskhod 1 into Earth orbit, which would become the first spacecraft with a multi-person crew, and the first flight without pressure suits. Despite being fit for three cosmonauts, the Voskhod spacecraft was effectively identical to the single-seat Vostok, the first manned spacecraft ever. Conditions were cramped, to say the least. The three cosmonauts had to go on a diet to fit into their small seats, uh, and the mission was fairly dangerous given the fact that the crew had no spacesuits at all and that the 11A57 launch vehicle had no launch escape system. Luckily all went well and the crew touched down back to Earth in the capsule just over 24 hours after launch. The same day, 30 years later, the Magellan spacecraft burns up in the atmosphere of Venus. The spacecraft was launched from the Space Shuttle Atlantis in 1989 with a mission to map the surface of Venus using radar and to measure the planet's gravitational field. Although much of the Magellan spacecraft was expected to vaporize upon atmospheric entry, some amount of wreckage is thought to have hit the surface. On October the 14th, we'll be able to celebrate the anniversary of Chuck Yeager's historic Bell X-1 flight in 1947, in which he became the first person to officially exceed the speed of sound, reaching Mach 1 at an altitude of 45,000 feet over the Rogers Dry Lake in the Mojave Desert. The X-1 that he flew that day was later put on permanent display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum. The Bell X-1 would become the first of the X-Planes, a series of experimental aircraft which would end up including the legendary X-15, the first manned hypersonic aircraft that was capable of suborbital spaceflight, and it also included spacecraft such as the X-37 spaceplane and the X-38 re-entry vehicle, although the latter was unfortunately cancelled due to budget cuts. But very cool aircraft nonetheless. Moving swiftly on to the next day, October the 15th, we will be able to celebrate the 1997 launch of the Cassini probe, which blasted off the pad at Cape Canaveral atop a Titan IV rocket with a destination of Saturn, and the flagship class spacecraft arrived at the ringed Leviathan in July 2004 after a long, long journey which took it on a string of flybys past Venus, 
Earth, an asteroid, and Jupiter. The Cassini probe extensively studied Saturn, returning some phenomenal photographs in the process, as well as its rings and moons. The spacecraft also carried the European Space Agency's Huygens lander, which touched down on Saturn's largest moon, Titan, in 2005. The Cassini probe went on to discover seven new moons orbiting Saturn, took 453,048 photographs, and collected 635 gigabytes of scientific data that would contribute to roughly 4,000 scientific papers. When the spacecraft finally exhausted its fuel reserves, the decision was made to send the spacecraft into Saturn itself, in order to prevent it from crashing into one of the planet's moons and potentially contaminating it with microorganisms from Earth. Cassini was destroyed in September of 2017 after spending 20 years in space. We wrap the week up on Sunday, October the 18th, where we'll be able to celebrate the flight of Felicity, the first cat to be launched into space in 1963. The black and white Parisian stray was launched atop a French Veronique, I think I said that right, sounding rocket on a suborbital trajectory, and the capsule was subjected to over 9 Gs of acceleration. Happily, Felicity survived the flight, and the mission's success was a huge achievement for France, which had just established the world's third civilian space agency after the Soviets and the US. Felicity was sadly euthanized two months after the launch so that scientists could perform a necropsy to examine her brain, and in December 2019, she finally got the recognition she deserved and had a statue erected in her honor at the French International Space University. Our final historical anniversary this week takes place on the 18th in 1967 which marks the anniversary of the Soviet probe Venera 4's arrival at Venus, which would go on to become the first spacecraft to measure the atmosphere of another planet. The probe entered the Venusian atmosphere and during its entry, its heat shield's temperature rose to a crispy 11,000 degrees Celsius and cabin deceleration forces reached 300 G. The descent lasted 93 minutes and the capsule deployed its parachute at around 52 kilometers above the planet's surface. During the remainder of its descent, the spacecraft analyzed the chemical composition, temperature and pressure of Venus, becoming the first in situ analysis of the atmosphere of another planet and the mission was a complete success. While the Venera 4's design did permit for data transmission after landing, it wasn't built to withstand the immense temperatures at the Venusian surface. And that wraps up our selection of the best aerospace anniversaries lined up to take place over the next seven days, which means it's time to wrap up this segment of the show. And with that, another installment of Space This Week is concluded. I hope now you can look forward to the coming days armed with the knowledge of all the launches and events set to take place and the anniversaries that we can celebrate along the way. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed the ride and if you want to see more like it, then there should now be a link to the full Space This Week playlist on the left-hand side of your screen. To the right is a video chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation AI and in the description below you'll find links to things like my Discord, social media, Media and merchandise. No need to waffle on any longer, so I'll sign off with a big thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. <laughs>